Welcome everyone, Adam DeWu here. As the recording of this Thursday, May 11th, 2023, drinking a non-piping hot caffeinated beverage. I'm heading to New York, going to NYC. I will be flying very shortly. I'm gonna be leaving downtown Celebration and going to MCO, going to Newark, New Jersey, which is just right across from Manhattan, heading over into NYC, and we'll be spending a solid week with travel days. Well, see, 11th, today's the 11th. We'll be flying back on the 18th, which gives me, take away the travel days there and back, gives me six full days to traverse around an area that I haven't been in a heck of a long time, and when I went there, was not really able to properly explore and enjoy it. I was in a band going through, very stressful, trying to find parking for a trailer, loading in and out, playing a show. This is gonna be a little bit different and I am pretty dang excited. It is a place that I have, I'm gonna say neglected, but I have not been too much. I'm inviting you to join me. Start spreading the news, shall you? I'll see you after a while. Crocodile down in Lake Reinhard and also Market Street downtown celebration. Going for the quaint going from the quaint community to the hustle and bustle of the Big Apple. The metropolis. I am gonna be trying to cover quite a bit. I'm not gonna to get to everything. In fact, I'm gonna just probably get to the tip of the iceberg. But it's a start. And maybe this trip will lead to other trips, and down the road I'll be there more frequently. But for now, a week at NYC is about to begin. Now I have to relook at the itinerary, but I believe my flight takes off around 11.15, 11.20, 11.30. 11 and change, if you will. So I got a little bit of time. I will be parking my car at the airport. I think it's $19 a day to park your car there. And it's just easier than ask people for rides or taking ride share. You figure the money it would take to get over there back and forth. Just pay the little bit extra just to have your car there. And then when you get back from the airport, get in my own car and drive back here. I don't have to bother anyone for a ride and just do my own thing. All right, I'm heading out. Now, if I was if I was going for more than a week, then yeah, I would I'd find a different different avenue, but parking my car at the airport. All right, pulling onto the property of Orlando International Airport. Check the itinerary. I'm flying out of United. I, well, I'm flying the airline United. Boards at 10.33, departs at 11.13 a.m. Gate 43, and I have a window seat, first class. Heading in. I am heading over to B. I'm a B-boy. Standing in my B-boy stance. Hurry up and give me the microphone. You know the rest. Truthfully, I don't even know why I thought of Onyx all of a sudden, but it just popped in my head. Let the boys be boys. So oh, there's the prices. $2 for the first 30 minutes, maximum daily rate, 24 hour period, $19 a day. Again, yes, I could get a ride share. Probably half of what I'd be paying we spent on that ride share or bother someone for a ride to pick me up, etc. etc. But for me, I just for me it's just easier just to pay the fee. It's only seven days, eight days. Come back, get in my car, head home. No issues. Get a really good view of the control tower from up here, top of this view of the structure. Try to get in the spot a little bit closer, kind of over near the hotel on there's a lot of parking. The parking lot is pretty full, it rerouted me over here to this section. Control tower there. And I think I can head down. Elevator over here. The Orlando Experience. Going to B. Wait, this says A. Oh, here we go. A and B. Hey, I'll find it. I'll find it. All right, on to the moving walkway here. I'm excited to go to New York. All gates, ticketing, and check in. Also, I travel very, very light. Now, this is this is what I, I put above my head. I never do anything other than carry-on. 
I'm not even sure what brand this is, but I've had it for a while. It has the wheels down below that go side to side and front to front, so it's easy to, to kind of push. And then I also bring my DVC backpack. So I put this under my seat or above my head, and I put this above my head as well. I don't have to go to baggage claim when I get done each time. So it's just kind of quick, quick on and off. It's just the way I do things. Over here, this, I want to say it's iconic, but a noticeable flower mural here on the ground. So C is the new area I'm going to be. So I think I might be straight ahead. I'm always amazed on how lifelike this sculpture is. This little, this uh, gentleman here that's taken Taking a little rest. It's known as Traveler by Dwayne Hansen. Bronze, polychrome, and oil. Mixed media accessories, 1985. I guess is when this was made. This looks like a real person here, but it's not. It's just uh, made of clay and oil and other things. And I can't think of MCO without thinking about this fountain that is right over here. The good old fountain, Orlando International. And from this angle, it doesn't look like the checkpoints are too backed up. I think it's going to be smooth sailing. Other, sometimes I've seen them stretch way out. Like I've seen the lines go way out over into that little carpeted area over there and over there. It doesn't look too bad. It looks like maybe a dozen people deep. Let's go check the board and see if my flight is on time. And get the specs of it. Oh, there's a bird. Look at this. I've heard on a bird. I've heard of. There it goes. I say I've heard of bird on a wire, not bird in an airport. Okay, I found my flight. Very top one. There's a lot of delays. Thankfully, mine at the moment is not delayed. Everything that's red is delayed. I am flight 2387, not delayed. Gate 43, time 1113 departure. Looks like it is the bottom one of the Newark ones. No, second to the top, 2387. So the second one down, 1113. Gate 43, on time. The other one's delayed. Mine's on time, thankfully. Okay, I didn't realize when I first walked in, I passed by the gate I needed to go to, or the, the entrance point, so I'm not gonna be going through there. I've gotta head back this way to the B gates. So I gotta walk back this way, down there. All right, I found it, current time, 9.35. Big boards over here, so there's gate 1 through 59. Doesn't look too bad. Checkpoint's not too bad. I'll see you on the other side of the checkpoints. Well, you know how it goes. There's a sunroof here, too. All right, piece of cake. Did not take very long. Soon a monorail's gonna be pulling. Oh, the monorail's pulling in right now, but basically you have to take your belt off. Shoes and bags go on the, go on the actual conveyor belt where the only thing that needs to go in the tray was my laptop that I had to pull out of my, look at this, I'm kind of like waving at this so you can see my reflection. But yeah, it wasn't too bad. And I take, had to take your shoes off. Anyone under the age of 12, shoes can stay on. But it wasn't too bad. It was like five minutes tops in and out of there. Sometimes it's way worse than that. So I'm heading over, I think, gate 43. Just to double check here, Newark. Oh. Okay, it changed. Gate four, this is just showing the layout of the land, gate 40 through 49. I think it was 43. This goes to gate 30 to 59. I'm just gonna take a chance and say that it probably is. Please stand clear of doors and hold on to handrails. Oh yes, plenty of time, 10 minutes to 10. I believe it boards at 10.30, give or take. Getting pretty familiar with this area. I mean, I didn't go to the right spot, but yeah, I'm going. 10.30 through 39, I'm looking for 40 through 49 over there. Last minute merchandise from Orlando. Also Orlando sweatshirts over there. The next merchandise I'll see will be Newark and NYC. Got a couple different airlines over here at these gates. Got one over there and then mine, which is United right there. Looks like it's gonna be a pretty nice day. Not sure what the weather's like in New York, but nice so far here in Florida, at least upon departure. And looking across the way too, there's another United over there. 
and then here's the little little tug thing that uh, ends up taxiing the vehicles out and then, well, probably mostly out. As the United over there, and there's that control tower that parked on the other side of that. So here's gate 41. I'm going to 43. Ooh, that might be my plane right over there. Let's see everyone down here working, pulling the pallet jacks around. The flying food group. I wonder if it comes with a meal. I think it's only like a two and a half, three hour flight. I'm not sure if that comes with a meal, doing first class or not. Usually don't eat early in the day, but I'm not going to turn down something that I paid for as far as food goes. So whatever they, whatever they have, I'll try to get a moderately healthy option, even though the portions aren't too big. Also doing pretty good on the treadmill. And when I get to my hotel tonight, they have a gym. And if it's operational, I'm going to be on the treadmill. If you want to follow along with my treadmill weight loss journeys, my Instagram, I post stories on my Instagram, Adam the Woo ATW. That's Adam the Woo ATW on Instagram. Follow my stories. I don't post a lot of actual photos, but I do post stories of my workout and weight loss. Ooh, check this out. This is pulling away. Number 41 is about to depart. And I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that that is 43 over there. I'll get closer and look like a flying food group. Little food containers going up, getting up elevated. I always like how happy this pilot is right here on the luggage cart. Ooh, would that be New York City? Is that an interpretation of the New York City skyline? Yeah, maybe it's just a vague cityscape. A lot of construction on the roads in New York City, though, so I'm sure maybe it is New York City. I don't know. And that could be my pilot right there. Very happy-go-lucky pilot. Oh yeah, it is in fact the one I was just pointing at. It's 9.55 now, gate 43, 11.13 status, on time. Flight 2387, departing to Newark. Newark weather forecast, temperature 66 degrees. Now these are not public pay phones, but they are phones if you need any help. It's called a page phone. And there's also another kind of old timey landline here as well. It reminds me of my old kitchen phone that I had back in the day with my family. I'm just gonna wander around a little bit. Also, I've never done one of these United clubs. I think you pay a little bit extra, even though I'm doing first class. I don't think I can go in here. One of these days I'm gonna do the, the clubs, but I don't know, I just kinda like waiting around. I'm sorry. That guy wanted to get in the United Club, that was in his way. He was in a rush. It doesn't look to be like too big of an airline. It looks like kind of a, I don't wanna say it's like a super small one, but definitely not like a, a, some of the bigger ones that I've flown on before, but that's it, right over there. Look at this American flag down here on top of the United luggage, luggage carts. That's my pony, or that's my flight, I should say. I should say that's the flight, the one. And this is the flight at gate 46. Other airlines like Delta just landed or is about to take off. There's another one pulling in over here. I can't tell what airline that is. Okay, this is kind of cool. This is a close-up view here of a little tugboat thing doing the pushback. So there's a metal rod that's connected. So over here is my gate right there. This is 41, but you can see it's pushing it back. So the engines do not go in reverse. I mean, I think planes can go in reverse, but they usually don't when they're being pushed back from the tarmac away from the gates. And then once that thing dislodges from the front, then the engines turn on and it uses the jet per, the jet power and the engine power to go forward. But backing up, see there's two workers over there that are guiding it back. And it pushes it back just like that. It's called a pushback. Pretty neat. about to board now. It's amazing how people line up for group. I'm in group one, but everyone just kind of lines up at the front of the line. Kind of the philosophy that I'm going to have a good seat because I paid for first class, but we're all going to the same spot. So I'm just kind of teetering back here towards the end of the line until they call group one. I am sitting in seat 4F. Seat F, row four. I believe it's a window seat. I usually always try to get the window seat so I can film out. I don't really like the eye, I like the window just so I can see what's going on out the window and you know, show things and then when I 
we'll be able to see things when I land and when I take off. So if I can see anything out the side here. There we go. And they're scanning in some checked luggage. Of course, mine is above my head. It's like a little fuel station over there. Another United flight going by. And plenty of leg room on this one. sitting here on the runway or the tarmac. All right, the plane is moving now after about 10 minutes sitting there. Uh, we're going back. We're going back to the gate. What the heck? Uh, that's not good. Going back to the gates. Maybe not. Possibly just going over to a different runway. This is interesting. Not going back to the gate. I don't know where we're going. All right, it appears as if we're gonna take off from a different runway. There's a line of planes except nothing's taking off from here, so maybe they're gonna stall it again, but either way, Looks like we're gonna depart. Yeah, the lady I'm sitting next to said sometimes when she flies from here to Newark, sometimes there is delays in DC because sometimes it's the president and those flights, which kind of makes sense to me. Maybe they change the airspace at certain times, so switch runways. Maybe we're gonna shift the flight. Either way, taking off. Heading to Newark and then to NYC.
I'm Superman. I feel like I'm watching a Richard Donner Superman film when I fly at cloud level. only five calories one serving five calories for the dressing usually the dressing is like the worst thing you can put on stuff also real silverware fancy all right that was pretty good i actually ate everything including like the little meat side and the little dessert option but now i need a coffee so i asked for another water and a coffee Well, they brought a lot of cream and sugar, but I just used one pack of sugar, one pack of cream. I always like looking at water. It kind of reminds me of Jurassic Park with the turbulence. If you just look at a water glass, you can always see how much turbulence is happening.
do. All right, been waiting about, I don't know, five minutes or so for the jet bridge. They made a couple of announcements. They're waiting for an operator that knows how to get the jet bridge up to the plane to let it run off. So again, just waiting patiently. But NYC right over there, look at that. I should be able to zoom in on there. That's a really good view from here. I've arrived. And this is an airport I've never been to before. I've never flown in to Newark. I've never flown into any any of the in New York City airports. I think there's LaGuardia and there's another one, but yeah. I've arrived. And as stated, when I left Orlando, the next merchandise I would see would be New York, the Empire State. Look at that. I'm guessing this is the exit out of the airport underneath the US flag. Look at that. Oh, wow. I mean, it's not, that's just a photo of the Statue of Liberty, but yeah. It's pretty cool seeing it out the window. Had to look over people to see it, but yeah. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before coming off of the escalator. This is this circular yellow, not the yellow big road. I feel like I'm in the Wizard of Oz. We follow this along. Obviously, they don't have baggage, but maybe ground transportation is where I can decide if I want to like Uber it or taxi it. This is kind of neat, this photograph downtown and all that along these doors I guess like store a storage area here <laughs> clever disguise for storage doors all right this says taxis over this way and they're all over there weather feels really good out here too airport taxis I think about an uber I'd have to wait a really long time for an Uber, we're a taxi. I always wanted to hail a taxi. I'm gonna take one. That was everything that I hoped a New York City taxi experience would be. That guy got around town faster than I ever could have in a rental car. I mean, it was just like, wow. Navigating cars, like it was going out of style. Right. Now, this is kind of interesting. The sign here says, no standing anytime. All right, all checked in. Pretty good view from the room of the city, or at least part of the city. I'm gonna go down there in a bit and kind of wander around. And I'm gonna be here for a series of days, so I'm gonna do a lot of exploring. But yeah, this is a pretty nice city view. Kind of crack the window a little bit, get some fresh air in here. This is as far as it opens, understandably. Now I gotta start making a list of things I wanna do and things I wanna see. That's the Empire State Building. 
I might go do that right now. Well, not right now, but in the today. Yeah, this is kind of how textbook New York. You got the little street vendor over here. You got the crowds, mail delivery. It's pretty wild that I am I'm in New York right now. over here at this little miniature car behind that one. A little teeny tiny car right there. This place is a vibe. Very hectic. Very busy. And I feel like this is probably just the norm. I feel like this is out of the ordinary. It's a big pile of stuff right over here including a mannequin and a desk like someone cleaned out their office. Right here. Empire State Building. I've always wanted to go up in this. Yeah, that's Since I was young. And I'm finally gonna go, go up in the Empire State Building. It's just one of those things. I have entered into the building itself. All the different languages here saying welcome. Pretty amazing. I'm gonna go up inside this thing, finally. Empire State Building. Now there's two different tickets you can buy. There is a $44 ticket, which I think takes you to like the 80th floor. And then there is a $78 ticket, give or take a dollar, that you can go up like 20, flo 20 floors higher. That's the one I chose to go up to. And there's a model of it right here. Really tall model, so I'm gonna be going up, up there. Right now, down ground level. All right, so I go to the second floor, show my tickets, and then head up. This is the ceremonial switch that celebrities use to turn the Empire State Building's lights on. It's this right here. They grab a hold of this, pull it down, and light up the Empire State Building. And as I walk up these stairs, take a look at this. There's another bigger model. Oh, it looks like there's like a little atrium area down there with like a little park and an eating area. It's like maybe an eighth of the way up before you head up to the tippy top. Wow, that's a wild photo. There's a zebra and some elephants walking down towards the building. That's like a iconic structure. Here's one of the workers. Here it is illuminated at night. Here it is used in the classic film King Kong right there with Kong at the top of it. Minnie Mouse attends her first New York Fashion Week right over there. And there's a view of that model right there that I just walked up the stairs a little bit ago. And my ticket scanned, and I'm through. Also, there's a pretty intense checkpoint when you come through. Almost like going through the airport, pretty similar. This is the survey marker. Use the position the surveyor's levels for the construction of the building. 102 stories from the excavation pit. I mean, if that's the actual one, that's pretty incredible. And here are a couple of the workers enjoying a sandwich and an apple on their lunch break after surveying and working on the construction of this towering marble. These are the relay controllers that used to run the original elevators. Computers run them today. These were the relay controllers that would run the elevators back in the original days. World's most famous building, of course, King Kong, Wonder Woman, Sleepless in Seattle, even though this is New York and it's not Seattle, but still in Sleepless, the movie Sleepless in Seattle. This is a pretty neat effect. You got King Kong's hands over there, and then you got King Kong looking through the window right there. Took another elevator, six more floors up, and now on the 86th floor. This is gonna be something else. This is really hitting me that I'm actually up in this thing. Yeah. I'm in New York. You can hear the sirens way up here. This is something else, I gotta be honest. I 
almost moved to New York once before I moved to Hollywood. I had the RV for like a year, I was traveling, and I thought, you know, I'll just kind of get off the road and move somewhere. And I moved from, I originally lived in Orange County, California, and I traveled for a while. And I kind of missed LA and I went back to LA, but for a good three or four months, I was looking at apartments in New York. All those times are kind of flashing back to me now, like what if I moved to New York? What if I had been in the Big Apple? Look at this place. I mean, with, with me, you never really know what the future holds, but yeah. <laughs> this is something else. Backside of where I just was, looking more towards Central Park. This place is full of skyscrapers. So Central Park is over there. I mean, it's just, it's like, it's, it's insane. Yet another elevator went up to 20 more floors to the hundred and something floor. Now this is not open air like the 86th floor was, but you can lean right against the glass if you so choose. They also have the directional arrows east facing this way. Just think that. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people living in each one of those buildings or working in each one of those buildings. And multiply that times thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Just to show how much high up the last little overlook I was at is, you see down there, that's the side of the building as the 86 floor overlook. So this is considerably a way higher up than down there. And it's also amazing how Central Park is this wedged out greenery area that no development has happened yet, is not allowed to happen, and I guess kind of like Griffith Park in LA and other areas where they set aside an area that's not to be developed and not supposed to be a part of the concrete jungle. Just looks so bizarre wedged in there, but it also looks kind of, kind of neat. Back down to the 80th and I'm looking out this way, just look at the Art Deco style of this building. It's just so incredible. Kind of hard to see it now because the sun is at a weird angle, but yeah. It's just so awesome to be up in this thing. And to be in New York. Still hasn't really hit me. Yet. A little fruit stand, impromptu fruit stand set up on this intersection. One thing I found interesting, it's pretty common if I guess if you're in New York, but the trash has just gone from up either upstairs, the, uh, different levels of the stores, but just put it right on the street. So sometimes you'll just see trash bags everywhere around here. I mean, it seems pretty normal for, I guess, people around here, but yeah, it's a little bit different than everywhere else. Oh, this is kind of interesting. Look at this. It's a Dalmatian holding a New York City taxi cab on its nose, balancing it up on its nose. Yeah, and it, New York, you think of New York, you think of taxis. I always have. It's good to see people with rideshare programs and other public transit taxis. Are still please taxi around, taxis everywhere. Taxis everywhere in the NYC. Helicopter taking off up there. Away from the hospital, I believe. And that's gonna do it for today. Ooh, look at this. Beautiful. 
sun setting over there. New York City skyline, part of the skyline. So massive. This is just a, an inkling of the skyline as shown when I was up top of the tower. It's going to be a fun week. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.